In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We pray the way of the cross for the intentions of our parish, for all those who need healing in body and in spirit. And we pray for the intentions of all gathered here, whichever intention anybody holds dear to their heart. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we have made this journey to die for us with the unmeasurable love. Even though we have unworthily abandoned you so many times, pardon us, O God, and permit us to accompany you on this journey. You went to die for love of us. Please forgive us for when we offended you and grant us that we may love you with our whole heart. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, fill our hearts with the light of your spirit so that by following you on your final journey, we may come to know the price of our redemption and become worthy of a share in the fruits of your passion, death and resurrection. You who live and reign forever and ever, amen. Station one, Pilate condemns Jesus to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Pilate's sentence of death by crucifixion was meant to calm the crowd's fury and meet their demand. Though increasingly convinced that Jesus is truly innocent, this is not enough for Pilate to decide in his favor. After Jesus is scourged and crowned with thorns, the mob still wants his death. Pilate finally gives in and condemns Jesus to death by crucifixion. Over the centuries, the denial of truth has spawned suffering and death. It is the innocent who pay the price of human hypocrisy. Half measures are never enough, nor is it enough to wash one's hands. Responsibility for the blood of the innocent remains. Jesus, you accepted an unjust judgment. Help us remain faithful to the truth and do not allow the responsibility for the sufferings of the innocents to fall upon us. Station two, Jesus takes up his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Christ, condemned to death, must be burdened with the cross just like the two other men who have received the same punishment. He draws near to the cross, his body atrociously bruised and lacerated, blood running down his face from his head crowned with thorns. The cross, the instrument of a shameful death, now becomes the key that will open the door to the deepest mystery of God. Through Christ's acceptance of the cross, the instrument of his own self-emptying, all people will come to know that God is love, a love without limits. Jesus, you accepted the cross at the hands of men to make of it the sign of God's saving love for humanity. Grant us the grace of faith in this infinite love. Station three, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Jesus falls under the cross. Exhaustion makes him fall. His body is stained with blood from the scourging. His head is crowned with thorns. All this causes his strength to fail. So he falls, and the way of the cross crushes him to the ground. He does not resort to his superhuman powers. He does not resort to the power of the angels. To stagger and fall under the weight of the cross is what he wills. From Christ falling beneath the way of the cross, 
God will bring forth the salvation of humanity. Jesus, as you fall under the weight of your faults and rise again for our justification, help us all who are weighted down by sin to stand up again and continue the journey and carry the cross for our weakness. Station four, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Mary meets her son, condemned to death, carrying the cross on which he must die. Because she is his mother, she suffers deeply. As a mother would, she embraces the cross together with her condemned son. His cross becomes her cross. His humiliation is her humiliation. Although his pain is hers, striking deep in her maternal heart, the full truth of his suffering can be expressed only in terms of a shared suffering, compassion. The word is part of the mystery, expressing in some way her unity and the suffering of her son. O oh Mary, your mother's heart is torn by grief, but still you trust that God to whom nothing is impossible, will fulfill his promises. Help us surrender to God's love and in the face of suffering, reject and trial. Never doubt that love. Station five, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Simon of Cyrene, called upon to carry the cross, doubtless had no wish to do so. He was forced to. Carrying the cross together with a convict could be considered an act offensive to the dignity of a free man. Although unwilling, Simon took up the cross to help Jesus. He walked beside Christ, bearing the same burden. When the condemned man's shoulders became too weak, he lent him his. But Simon receives a gift because, in a unique way, the Son of God has made him a sharer in his work of salvation. Jesus, like Simon, welcome us too under the weight of your cross. And as we carry each other's burdens, help us to become witnesses to the gospel of the cross and to you. Station six, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Veronica does not appear in the gospels. It is possible, therefore, that the name refers more to what the woman did. As a woman, she could not physically carry the cross or even be called upon to do so. Yet in fact, she did carry the cross with Jesus. She carried it in the only way possible to her at the moment and in obedience to the dictates of her heart. With her veil, she wiped the sweat and blood from the Lord's face. The face remained imprinted on her veil, a faithful reflection, a true icon of Jesus. Jesus, you accepted Veronica's selfless gesture of love. Grant that our works will make us like you and will leave in the world a reflection of your infinite love. Station seven, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. In the dust of the earth lies the condemned one, crushed by the weight of his cross. His strength drains away more and more, but with great effort, he gets up and continues his march. To us sinners, what does this second fall say? More than the first one, it seems to urge us to get up, to get up again on our way of the cross. All persons meet Christ who carries the cross and falls under its weight. Comforted, they have gotten up again and brought to the world 
the word uh, that hope comes from the cross. Jesus, you fall under the weight of human sin and get up again to take it upon yourself and cancel it. Give us the strength to carry the cross of daily life and to get up again from our falls. Station eight, Jesus meets the woman of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Here is a call to true repentance and sorrow at the reality of the evil that has been committed. Jesus tells the daughters of Jerusalem who were weeping with compassion for him, not to weep for him, but for themselves and their children. Jesus had once wept over Jerusalem for telling the terrible destructive fate that awaited the city because it would not recognize the time of his visitation for salvation. If, as we follow Christ on the way of the cross, our hearts are moved with pity for his suffering, we cannot forget that admonition. Jesus, you came into this world to visit all those who await salvation. Help us recognize the time of your visitation and share in the fruits of your redemption. Station nine, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Once more, Christ has fallen to the ground under the weight of the cross. The crowd watches, wondering whether he will have the strength to rise again. The third fall seems to express the self-emptying emptying of the Son of God, his humiliation beneath the cross. We can appreciate the extent of that self-emptying when we see Jesus falling for the third time under the cross. We can appreciate it when we mediate on who it is falling, who it is lying in the dusty road under the cross at the feet of the hostile crowd that spares him no insult or humiliation. Jesus, through your humiliation beneath the cross, you reveal to the world the price of its redemption. Give us the courage to follow the same path which, by the way of the cross and self-emptying, leads to life without end. Station 10, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As Jesus is stripped of his clothes at Golgotha, we recall that one's body is the expression of one's soul. Christ's body is the expression of his love for the Father. With every wound, every spasm of pain, every wrenched muscle, every trickle of blood, with all the exhaustion in its arms, all the bruises and lacerations on its back and shoulders, this stripped body is carrying out the will of both father and son. It carries out the father's will when it is stripped naked and subjected to torture, when it takes unto itself the immeasurable pain of human profound. Jesus, you accepted death on the cross for our salvation. Let us share in your sacrifice on the cross so that what we are and what we do may always be free and conscious, sharing in your work of salvation. Station 11, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The execution begins. The torturer's blows crush the hands and feet of the condemned, one against the wood of the cross. The nails are driven violently into his wrists. Those nails will hold the condemned man as he hangs in the midst of the inexpressible torments of his agony. In his body and his supremely sensitive spirit, Christ 
suffers in a way beyond words. The pain drives its way into his entire body, which, nailed like a mere thing to the beams of the cross, is about to be utterly annihilated in the convulsive agony of death. O Christ, lifted high, O love crucified, fill our hearts with your love, that we may see in your cross the sign of our redemption, and, drawn by your wounds, we may live and die with you. Station 12, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In the last moments of his life on earth, nailed to the cross, pinned in that terrible position, Jesus thinks of the Father in his final dialogue will only be between the dying Son and the Father who accepts his sacrifice of love. When the ninth hour comes, Jesus cries out, It is accomplished. Now the work of the redemption is complete. The mission for which he came on the earth has reached its goal. The rest belongs to the Father. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Jesus, in your agony with your last breath, you entrusted us to the Father's mercy with all your weakness and sins. Fill us with your spirit of love so that our indifference will not render vain in us the fruits of your death. Station 13, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In his mother's arms, they now place the lifeless body of her son. Once again, Jesus lies in her arms, as he did in the stable in Bethlehem, during the flight into Egypt and at Nazareth. In the mystery of the redemption, grace, the gift of God himself, is interwoven with a price paid by the human heart. Mary, who more than anyone was enriched by God's gifts, now pays all the more with her heart. How many human hearts bleed for this mother who is paid so dearly? Mary, help us learn the difficult love that does not flee from suffering, but surrenders trustingly to the tenderness of God for whom nothing is impossible. Station 14, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The lifeless body of Jesus has been laid in the tomb, but the stone of the tomb is not the final seal on his work. The last word belongs not to falsehood, hatred, and violence, but will be spoken by love, which is stronger than death. Very soon this tomb will become the first proclamation of praise and exaltation of the Son of God and the glory of the Father. The empty tomb is the sign of the definitive victory of truth over falsehood, of good over evil, of mercy over sin, of life over death. Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you were drawn by the Father from the darkness of death to the light of a new life in glory. May the sign of the empty tomb become for us a wellspring of living faith, generous love, and unshakable hope. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are drawn by the Father from the darkness of death to the light of a new life and glory. Grant that the sign of the empty tomb may speak to us and to future generations and become a wellspring of living faith, generous love, and unshakable hope. To you, O Jesus, whose presence, hidden and victorious, fills the history of the world be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.